I made my own roof rack for the Land Rover and saved a fortune. Come and see how I did it. Right, here we go. First part of the job is make the six legs. They're all exactly the same. They're made out of two millimeter aluminium, which I'm just cutting up here out of some strips that I had lying around. The small piece that I cut out of the middle, that gets used for the clamping at the bottom. And now I have to notch out the top of each one very slightly because I want these legs to cant over at a small three to four degree angle. And cutting them like this will allow them just to move in at the top by a f about 10 mil. <clears throat> Right, the next thing I've got to do is trim out the piece that I couldn't get to with the guillotine. Do that very quickly here. There's six of them, they're all exactly the same. You'll see that I'm putting beeswax onto the cutting disc. You do need to do something when you're grinding or cutting aluminium with an abrasive tool because it tends to grab. The beeswax is awesome. It makes it behave just like cutting or grinding normal mild steel. Do try it. I know you'll be pleased with the results. But I'm cutting out this lower section because when I fold these legs into a channel, I need a slight angle on them. And that's why it has to have this dished piece on the top so that when the two legs fold, the upright will sit on a three or four degree angle instead of straight up and down. I'll sandwich them all together now and give them a little grind up to make sure they're all the same <coughs> and then start the folding. Mark the lines of course, I need something to fold down. Now my plan here is to show you how you can achieve a $300 roof rack instead of a $2,000 roof rack with a minimum of tools. I don't have anything special here. I can't do the welding. Um, the welding's going to have to go to a mate of mine. But hey, look at my folder. There's nothing high tech here. That's just a piece of angle iron bent round and squeezed up in the vise. And I'm belting it with a rubber mallet. But if you do it nicely, the results are just as nice as in a proper folder. So the trick is, of course, to get all six of these exactly the same, so that the roof rack is supported nicely on six points evenly. So I'm putting quite a lot of effort into accurate measurements Accurate marking out and accurate setup in my high tech folder here. So there you go. See that slight angle I've got, three or four degrees? That'll just make it look a little special, give it a little bit of style. These are all the pieces that have to be um, assembled into the legs. Now I can't do all of this, I've got to weld these pieces in the foreground onto the top of each leg and I don't have the facilities for that so I'm going to be taking this round to a welding mate here you go look that's how they're gonna go I'm gonna make him a little jig so that he can't get the setup wrong and he'll weld those and then I'll put rivnuts on the underneath of the bars and I'll be able to bolt straight up into the bottom of my bars when it's done here we go here's that little wooden jig this will just uh, help him with the setup, make sure that everything stays exactly right. So I'll whistle all this lot off to him. And now I'm going to start on the actual roof rack itself. This is pretty bloody tedious work, but I just keep consoling myself, thinking that I'm going to be saving myself about 
$1,500 at least because I reckon this whole project is going to cost me around $300. I've made it out of um, aluminium that I had in stock that I had left over from another job. There's an awful lot of notching going on. I've got to take out notches where every one of these longitudinal strips crosses over the three supporting bars. So this is going to take quite some time. And after I've done the notches, I just cut out the piece like that on both sides. They'll all need a bit of a clean up with the file just to get the burrs off but you can see how they sit down over the main bars in the background here. In addition to the rivets on the top I'm going to whip this round to Evan, my aluminium welder mate, and he's going to weld down the sides. So the whole thing will be one strong, cohesive, welded together lattice of aluminium channel. There are 12 bars running the length of the roof rack and so to make sure that they all turn out exactly the same I've been doing them in uh, four groups of three. Setting everything up like this and holding the channels together gives me the opportunity to get all the slots lined up all the way across three bars at a time. Well I'll just finish off that riveting and throw it up on the roof for a test fit. Nah, just kidding. I've actually got to find a way of getting it down to Evan the welders. So the best way is to strap it to the top of the landy and drive it round there. Well, it's now the next day. I'm back from Evan the welders. He's done 158 welds, I think he said, to um, make that all one piece. And he's also welded a whole heap of pieces of strip that I guillotined from some 2mm sheet. He's welded them end to end to form a long strip and what I'm going to do is centralise that on the front and get one rivet in and that will be the perimeter band that goes around the roof rack and stops stuff sliding off and stiffens everything up. So I'm just getting the uh, first rivet in and then I've got to evenly work that away to the corners and around the corners down the side and then I'll meet it all up again at the back end. So it's a, it's a tedious job we're going here at double the speed trying to uh, keep it interesting for you and I've cut some chunks out but uh, this roof rack has taken me about a day and a half's work so it's been a little bit design as you go um, but the great thing is including paying Evan for the welding it's only cost me $300 and there's no way that you could buy a 100% aluminium roof rack for a Land Rover for that kind of price even if you add uh, two days labour into it it's um, still reasonably affordable and the great thing is it's exactly how I want it I didn't want a super duper heavy duty roof rack because I'm not a fan of putting a lot of weight up onto the top of a vehicle anyway. So this is just for sleeping bags and bed rolls. Certainly no spare wheels or fuel or water.
it would have been so much easier if I'd had a helper because this long strip was actually 7.2 meters long which is 24 feet and um, I had to manage that all by myself so it was held to the back of the roof rack with loops of string as I worked my way around I moved the loops of string along and pretty soon I ended up on the back panel joining it together Well that my friends is my aluminium roof rack. Now comes wiring the spotlights and here is the cheapest way to get yourself good quality wire. Buy yourself a 6 meter extension lead for $6 brand spanking new and in it you'll get three high quality wires colour coded. One's going to be for my reversing light the others for the spotlights and the third will be for the interior light all of which this vehicle never had in its original life um, <laughs> it doesn't have a reversing light switch on the gearbox so you can't wire in something to automatically come in when you hit reverse you will have to manually flick a switch but hey, that's okay it's an old beast and I knew what I was in for. It's now 7.30 in the evening, starting to lose the light of the day. I've got about an hour left, sun's low in the sky and I'm now connecting up the wires for the spotlights to that main loom that I ran down the interior. The power feed comes up the windscreen pillar and then heads off above my head and down towards the back feeding the interior light and the reverse light. Oh, check it out. I'm actually quite proud of this. I think it's uh, a good couple of days' work. I think I might give myself Employee of the Week again. I win it most weeks, seeing as I'm the only one here. But, yeah, I'm happy with that. I've got a music festival to go to next week, so I've got all sorts of bedding for other people. Kayaks and a bicycle and all sorts of things to take with me. So, uh... A lot of it's going to go up on the roof.